Hey guys, welcome back to my tutorial. I hope you guys are doing good today. Um, today in this tutorial, I'll be creating my timer class. I know I mentioned it before, and I have to. In the previous video, we finally created an OpenGL window, so yay! So now we gotta create stuff in there, but yeah, so I apologize. There's nothing gonna be shown in the window just yet. We still have to build other stuff, but yeah, in this tutorial, we can create our timer class because we can need it anyways. And if we have time, we'll create our Spark Patch classes and we may create a simple Vector 2D and 3D class, just a simple one. So, uh, I don't know yet for pretty sure that's going to happen. But before I continue, I wanted to say something to you guys. Um, I have been getting like um, messages and stuff like that saying how come I don't use like external libraries from like standard libraries like STDs, vectors, list and or maybe I know in my previous tutorial I mentioned uh, that I don't know if I want to build a uh, do a tutorial about uh, matrix matrices and how to create the classes for them and vectors and all that kind of stuff and I know in the future I know in the future a lot of people can tell me or at least gonna comment or message me telling me how come you didn't use a GLM library? So I wanted to say something real quick about that, my little quick rant. Um, I would say not to use any external libraries like standard libraries, STDs, <laughs> STDs, um, or GLM libraries because it'll make you a better and more ninja programmer if you actually don't use it. You'll be a more You'll get a better with it if you don't use any STD classes, STD libraries. And I had a class in college, or actually a couple of classes that went together. There were four classes. And I had a professor, and all those four classes had the same professor. And he made us not use standard library classes. And I would say I got in a lot better on programming because of it. So I would suggest you guys to do the same. I have gotten messages before people are using GLM libraries because they told me. And they're telling me what is a vector class. I mean, not vector. I mean, uh, what is a cross product or that kind of stuff. You know, I don't have this GLM library doesn't have that function. So what do I do? So, and basically, I preach. Uh, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I'm pretty sure you guys don't know what the heck is going on in there. So I know they're there to make your life easier, but I would suggest not to use them because it will make you so much better programmer if you don't use them. So I just letting you know, guys, right now I'm not going to use any of them. I'm not gonna lie, I have used them before because he's and on the other tutorials I have used them and I only used them because I wanted you guys to understand what the heck is going on and make it easy for you plus I suck at that time so yeah I'm not gonna use them anymore so don't expect me to use them or any external libraries and do not mention it to me please <laughs> I'll say make you a, it will make you a better programmer only time I'll suggest you guys to use them is if you know how to build one yourself if you know how to build a vector class or a list class, then feel free. You already know what the what's going on in there, what's basically going on in internal, and what's in the vector and list classes. So you're already a ninja. So it's fine if you use it. Like me, I already created a list class before, so I know what the what's going on inside a list class. And vectors are basically arrays. They're basically really optimized, but. But yeah, I would suggest not to use them. I used arrays before and I'm not that great at it. So that's why I don't use them. Arrays can suck sometimes so you don't use them correctly. So I prefer not to use them. So yeah, that's all I would suggest you guys. If you guys want to be a better programmer, I will suggest not to use them. Okay. So anyways, enough of my rant. A four minute rant. So, um, so let's continue. We can create our our header files for our timer and as you can see I created I changed the layout this is so awesome I should have done that before I looked at my videos and and it looks a lot brighter I, I think YouTube made it a lot brighter if you go to HD you'll see it a little bit better so I apologize that they're really bright I wasn't told about it you know I just looked at it and I was like oh, okay it just does not look good so I changed the layout this looks so much better so I'm gonna start using this now. <laughs> so basically, what you want to create is a new class. We can call it timer. So we create a header and and a source file for it, or a CPP file. So header. 
I'm gonna call it timer. And I know before in you know, other tutorials are like, how come you didn't create a timer class? I'm like, that's not the reason I created that tutorial, you know. It wasn't because of the timer. But it's fine. It's okay. I'll make you guys happy today. Uh, this is going to be basically just static uh, variables because we only can need one. We only can have one timer, you know. You're not going to have multiple timers in there. There's no reason to, so. So, yeah. So, create our timer class or header file for that right now. Uh, define timer. And we can include windows because that's where it has all the stuff we can need right now. And can call it class timer. Make sure you spell it right. Create a public. You can have a static void update. A static boy that will grab our I mean a float and get delta time this will get our time that we can use because we can need it and we're just gonna have private variables today static and 64 and the reason why it's 64 because we have a lot more binary um, What's binary? More bits. Uh, there we go. Well, it's the same thing, you know. Well, not really. I don't know what I'm talking about. So if we have more bits here, which which is better when it comes to um to time, because time is really small sometimes. So we have another 64. The, the other one is gonna have. It's gonna be a previous frame. This one's gonna be a current frame. The other, the next one is going to be our frequency for sure. We can just name it freck or freak. I don't know how you guys want to pronounce that. And this is going to be our delta time. It's going to be a really short class, so don't worry about it. And that's all we can need in here. Oh, I, did I really named it source? Rename. Make sure you remember you didn't call it source like I did. Include, we can include our timer. Man, this layout is so much awesome. Way epicness and awesome going on in here. We can declare our, our static functions. I mean, static variables. What am I talking today? I can't even talk today, guys. Wait. Why is it not? But it, I, sh I should have named it timer, right? Timer. Yeah, it's taking a while to register all this stuff. So, so the previous frame, we can set that to zero. N64 timer and current frame. We can set that to zero. Frequency. I missed the underscore on that. Hold on. Let me just finish this. Equals zero. And our last one is N64. Timer. And delta time. Which you can set that to zero as well. So our update function. We can have delta time, delta time. We can set that to zero. Why is it not registering anything today? Hold on. What's going on today? What is going on? Oh, end of file. Uh, end of file. What do I have? Oh. oh. No wonder. 
Yeah, there we go. And for now, everything should work fine. No, I'm reminded. Timer's not in the class name. Timer. Okay. I'll make sure I, def I did everything correct today. There we go. Make sure it's if and def. What the heck am I doing today? Okay, so that's why it's all red. Okay, well now we can continue. Apologize for the delay. So now we can uh, call some of the Windows functions that they can have. So query, you seen this before? You may have seen it before, so it's, and you can see it again. So we can have a a large integer. You can cast as a large integer. Make sure it's a pointer. And you can get the dereference and frequency. You can create another. We can uh, call another function, which is the counter one. Make sure you can cast it to a large integer. You can say in current frame. Int delta ticks equals let me cast as an int. We can say we can uh, subtract the current frame from the previous one. And basically, it's an m delta time is equal to make sure you cast it. From delta ticks, and you can divide that by the frequency. Make sure you cast it as well. And make sure you add the previous frame equals the current one. And that's it for that function for the update. So our next function is going to be timer get delta time. We're gonna create a flow DT here. V equals M delta time. Well, it's not buoyed, it's a float. And we can create a um, an if statement here. I'll explain after. If delta time is less than zero, or if delta time is greater than one, we can uh, just set it to a small value. So I'm going to set it to 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
my past self knew the future. So we're going to call it update here. Make sure you call it. And there you go for that. And that's it. And that's it for our timer class. I hope you guys enjoy that.